All right, guys, Travis here with Charlie. This is another episode real quick. Um, this morning, I went out to start my car, and it decided that it didn't want to start. Um, now, I know that I've been having distributor issues before, so that was the first place that we decided to look. So, Charlie, what do we have going on right here? Uh, inside here is the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, camshaft, camshaft sensor. Yeah, sensor. Hidden behind this, our our cap goes right here. So you take the cap off first with the three bolts that are on here. And then when you get to this, there's a bolt here that holds this little armature piece on here. So you unscrew this. This one has been hijacked before, so that's why it looks a little odd. Yours should look like factory uh, quality. But we put a little lock washer on this because it's an oddball size. You pull this little shaft off right here. It only goes back where the hole is. And then inside this area here, there's a bolt here and a bolt down here that hold this plate on. So you pull this plate off here. And then inside here, put a little light on it. There's our sensor thing right there. And out around the edge of this are little tiny uh, squarish holes. They go through here and it's like on a CD player where the a laser looks at stuff and these little holes have to line up perfectly. It looks like a solid piece of something here, but it's actually little tiny holes that go through there. Now you can get dirt on this thing and you need to spray it off with some carb cleaner or something like that. But you'll be able to see that if that's the case because it gets gunky around the edges here. Also then, if you had dirt on here, it gets behind this part here. And then it gets stuck in there like uh, if you had something stuck inside of a CD player and uh, all gunked up. But you can take the uh, carb cleaner and just by going along there's a little crack here on the side where the little dial goes through and just shoot it out like this. We did this a while back and blew out a bunch of gunk in there. So that's all cleaned off now. We didn't see anything else come out. That looks clean so we're good. Um, and basically just repeat the process. We're going to put this bracket back on here and we attach the two screws. Oh, that piece is loose. Where are those two at? There's this one right here. Is that one of them? Yeah, there's okay. one of them. Let's see fill up Okay. Now guys, keep in mind that um, this is called an optical sensor, um, just in case uh, you know you need to know the name of it. Um, the optical sensor get, often gets gunked up, like he said. Um, if you need to, you can actually pull the whole distributor off. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing that if you don't have to, because then you'll have to uh, you know, reset the timing. Um, now the reason my car actually didn't start was not because of the optical sensor this time. However, in a previous time, like he said, we cleaned it. Um, my car was running kind of rough. It was like it felt like it was misfiring quite a bit, um, and we cleaned that out, and it actually cleared out the problem because it just it wasn't able to see properly. So, um, but like he said, we had a uh, that bolt was or the the screw was hijacked before, like somebody had. Uh, had actually lost the original screw. Well, they had put in a screw that was actually too small, and so it just kept falling out. And as you can imagine, um, that rotor um, is actually a conducting piece. So if the screw falls out, then it's no longer spinning, and your engine ro won't run right. So now we actually put in a bigger screw. And well, they messed up the threads. We had to tap out the hole a little bit yeah. for it to fit. Now, it's on there fairly firm. Yeah, so now once we reinstall the uh, the cap of the distributor, um, we should be able to fire it right up. And also a good thing to remember is there is a connector that goes right here on this piece. You're going to want to pull that off uh, before doing anything. And also the negative terminal of the battery, um, just in case of any um, shorting anything out. So... Um, but yeah, that was the issue this time as well. Um, we're actually going to be getting a new distributor. Um, we're going to be ordering it here in a couple days. Um, and we'll do another video on that as well. Uh, that way you guys know exactly how to...
take off and replace the distributor. Um, and like I said, uh, the video will include a um, uh, retiming because of the when once you take it off, you have to. Um, it, I mean, it's always a good idea to mark where the distributor goes, but obviously on the new one, it's not going to have that that mark that you put on it. And it'll be very hard to pinpoint the exact location of where you had it on the on the old one. So it's always just best to do another timing. Um, that way you can make sure that it's 100% right. So, uh, and we'll be right back once we finish putting these screws on and we'll see if uh, it starts up. Alright guys, we're back and now we have everything back in place and we're going to go and see if the, uh, if the car starts. This is the moment of truth. Good. Still recording? Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, it was successful. Um, at first, it didn't seem like it wanted to uh, fire so well, but it could be because the um, there's still a little bit of uh, carburetor cleaner on that sensor, so it might not might not have uh, the yeah, optical yeah. sensor might not have seen quite quite right. So, but anyway, yep, so now it starts, and we're going to take it for a test drive and see how it runs. So, thanks guys.